She's one of the most famous faces in the world. She's been in movies, books, music, memes. She's contributed a phrase to the English language. She's been talked and argued about, and even killed a man. Yet her name is unknown, and she is shrouded in mystery. I'm talking about the Mona Lisa. In 1503, there was a Renaissance man living in Florence by the name of Leonardo da Vinci. Among his areas of expertise was painting. It was in this area that he was contacted by Francesco del Giacondo, who paid a hefty price to commission a painting. Da Vinci agreed and spent the next four years working on it. At some point during that time, the artist moved to France, taking the painting with him. There he worked on it incessantly for over a decade, making changes here and there, possibly improving and changing his style over time. So, who was he painting? That question has kept the art world searching for many years. Many think that he was paid by the merchant of Venice to paint his wife. Lisa Gerardini. It would make sense. A man asking for a portrait of his wife would have been a symbol of wealth at that time. However, there are other theories. In 2015, Cott made an interesting claim. Using new technology, he claimed to have found evidence that da Vinci painted the Mona Lisa over the portrait of an entirely different woman beneath it. It is possible, however, this theory has its fair share of disagreement in the art community. It is not, however, the last time that the idea of another portrait would come up in the art world. An idea was stumbled upon by art scholars studying the painting in da Vinci's other works. As they looked at this painting and a self-portrait by da Vinci, a thought occurred to the students. What if da Vinci painted himself? <gasps> Laying the paintings side by side proved that they had many similarities. One could see how they would be of the same individual or of a close relative of the same individual. This would explain why he carried it with him everywhere for so many years. Of course, as always, that opinion also divided the art world. It has also been proposed that the Mona Lisa is an allegory for justice or for goodness. Fashion in Florence at the time of the painting included several things but none of them were the hairpins that she wears in the painting. At that time in history, people dressed according to their professions, wealth, and prominence. Mona Lisa would not have had these hairpins. They were possibly added because of a desire to make her a symbol of justice and goodness, rather than just a portrait. A note discovered some time later, and written by Italian government law clerk Agostino Vespucci, identifies the subject as Lisa del Giacondo. Of course, as you probably guessed, many disagree. It's possible he's wrong. Nobody knows for sure. However, some experts posit that Giacondo was actually not the subject of this painting but of a different painting by da Vinci. For 11 years of da Vinci's life, he was the family painter for a very wealthy family, and the idea has circulated that she may have been the Duchess of Milan, Isabella of Aragon. Even her name doesn't solve the issue. 
Her name in Italian is La Gioconda, which means the light-hearted woman. However, Mona Lisa means Madame Lisa. There are two ladies named Lisa on our list of contenders. Could it be one of them? Or perhaps a different one entirely? The painting went with him wherever he went. He never left it. He also never signed or dated it in any obvious way. What caused his obsession with this particular painting? What was it that made this such an obsession for him? Undoubtedly, it is an important work of art now. But in da Vinci's time, it was not. It would only have been important to him personally. But why? This painting, commissioned by another man. Da Vinci worked on this painting for many years, but he never gave the Merchant of Venice what he paid for. Nobody really knows why. Perhaps the painting was so important to him because he had a certain affection for the subject. We don't really know. Many people are unaware that the Mona Lisa is but one of many versions painted by da Vinci. There have been multiple copies retrieved from various locations over the years, including the Isleworth Mona Lisa, which was hidden in a Swiss bank vault for 40 years. The Vernon painting, which has been noted for being a much brighter version of the Mona Lisa. The Prado Mona Lisa, which in all likelihood was painted by one of da Vinci's Spanish students, likely either Fernando Yanez de la Armadina or Hernando de los Llanos. Why were there so many? It is understandable that students would use it as a tool to perfect their craft, much like a vocal artist might imitate a professional singer in order to learn how to sing. But why would da Vinci paint it over and over again? Eventually, da Vinci sold the painting to King Francois I, who was the artist's final patron in life. Yes, da Vinci was paid twice for this painting. Once by the Merchant of Venice, and once by King Francois I the latter of which actually received the painting. Francois, after buying the painting, hid it away in the palace of Versailles, and there it stayed hidden away for 200 years until Napoleon came along in 1799 and commandeered it for his own quarters. Five years later, however, it would end up being put on public display where it stands now, in the newly opened Louvre. That's the history, but there are mysteries that belong to this painting that go even beyond the scope of history. Like her bizarre smile. Da Vinci mastered the technique he used. When you look at her eyes, you see a smile, and when you look at her mouth, the smile disappears. Eyes smile, eyes smile. It could drive one mad. Speaking of driving one mad, do you remember when I told you that she has killed a man? In 1852, there was a French artist named Luc Maspero, who became the subject of the town gossip as he fell to his death from four floors up. It was a horrifying thing to witness, for sure. But what spurred it on? In the aftermath, there was a suicide note recovered from his room. In it, he explained that he would rather die than continue living and struggling with the mystery of the Mona Lisa smile. It seems she's quite a murderous gal. But others would go to the opposite direction. 
In 1911, a Louvre employee by the name of Vincenzo Perugia simply slipped the painting under his clothing and proceeded to walk out of the building. That was the first time that the painting's fame was spread about and grew. Everyone wanted to know what happened to the Mona Lisa, and the news blew up with the matter. The painting remained missing for two years until, in 1913, Art dealer Alfredo Jerry was contacted by Vincenzo, who wanted to bring the painting to Florence for a government reward, thinking that the painting had been stolen from Florence by Napoleon. He was swiftly captured, and the painting returned. But many people have been and remain skeptical that the painting we now have is the original. Where was the painting for two years? Would he have made a copy in the case that this was a trap? He was a wanted man, after all. We move on from here to mysteries within the painting. Many seeming codes have been found within the painting. For example, in her right eye, there seem to be the letters LV while in her left eye, there seem to be the letters C-E-B. Of course, L-V may be Leonardo da Vinci. But what is C-E-B? Some say this is just cracks in the paint, but others are not so sure. Did he embed these within the painting to see how closely his art students were paying attention? On the bridge behind the Mona Lisa appear the letters 72 or L2, possibly a reference to the flood of 1472, which swept away the Ponte Gablo or Ponte Vecchio bridge. It is possible that would make the location of the painting the old hill country to the south of Piacenza, if that is the correct understanding, of course. It would be one of the only clues as to the appearance of the bridge. The background itself seems a bit off. Like there are two different levels to it that divide behind her body. Why? Many doctors over the years have given the Mona Lisa a medical diagnosis. And she seems to be one sick lady. Among other things, she's been diagnosed with high cholesterol, facial paralysis, deafness, syphilis, pregnancy, bruxism, compulsive tooth grinding, missing front teeth, and domestic violence. Could some of these be true? Or all of them? It would be interesting to know how she has facial paralysis and compulsive tooth grinding. In any case, the Mona Lisa has many mysteries in her 519 years. What does she know? What is it she is hiding behind that famous Mona Lisa smile?